My biggest fear would be when the first comes and I don't get the rent. I found that my tenant had dumped concrete down my toilet. Can you believe Fair Housing fined me $5,000 for that? How do you onboard your tenants? What do you do? I don't even know if I do it right. If you're a landlord, don't just rent, rent perfect. The Rent Perfect Podcast with property expert and private investigator, David Pickron. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Rent Perfect Podcast. Pretty excited today. I have my good friend with me, Scott Williams. Scott, how are you doing today? Great. I am so glad you joined us. You know, you know, I have a lot of guests on, vendors and, and different people that teach us how to be really, really good landlords. And But more than not, I have a lot of attorneys that come and talk to us because that seems to be where we get in a lot of trouble. And so I want to really appreciate you being on here. Will you tell us a little bit about yourself? So I'm with the firm of Williams, Zinman, and Parm. Uh, I've been in the landlord-tenant area for 31 years, um, done literally hundreds of thousands of evictions through the firm, uh, thousands of uh, trials, and uh, it's always interesting. It's fun. Love the work. You would think after 30-plus years, you would just kind of burn out, but uh, right. uh, it just seems like there's always something new in this area. It's a different it's, day every single day, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. There's... A, you just when you think you've seen everything, right? There's another new take, and there's just someone, someone else crazy out there that's going to bring something you new know, to the table. I feel like we, we, even you and I, could do a hundred thousand podcasts of everything we could think of, and then there'd still be more. There would, right? Because there's just there's just so much. There's just so much, and there's just always one more person that brings something new to the table. Just something crazy will happen, and you'll go, yeah. "All right, this is something new we got to deal with." And uh, yeah. There you go. Well, Scott, as you know, I uh, we really focus on f- helping landlords find the right tenant the first time. And a lot of that is by properly vetting them and doing the criminal background check. And And one of the big headaches that I have personally as a landlord, and I know a lot of our clients have, is we'll have a person show up, we'll show them the property, we'll give them an application, they'll fill out the application, they'll qualify. And we're pretty excited because we have one of our units filled and then all of a sudden we pop by or we go by to get rent or something. And all of a sudden just this in, a different individual that's just kind of odd just kind of always seems to be there. There seems to be more cars in the driveway that, that were on the lease. And all of a sudden we start suspecting that there are people in our units that are not on the lease and that shouldn't be. So today I want to talk about the unauthorized um, occupant. And it even can really go into the, an un- unauthorized pet because it's kind of – similar in, in, in fashion. So give me an example of maybe something uh, you've dealt with le- lately where you've had an unauthorized resident and let, let's do a disclaimer first. We're here in Arizona, you're licensed in Arizona and in Colorado. Colorado. Yep. Okay. I don't practice um, in Colorado. Okay. But we're licensed here in Arizona. We're given Arizona advice, but each state is going to do this probably a little bit different, but there's going to be a lot of commonalities. And so for the Rent Perfect Nation out there, always make sure you check with your attorneys. We always have to give that disclaimer because if you say, well, I heard something on an Arizona podcast and we did it wrong in Kansas, you're going to be held liable for that and we don't want to get you in trouble. So what we talk about, take back, talk to your attorney. So sorry to interrupt you with that, but uh, t- you deal with these cases often. All the time. and. When you're talking about Arizona and other states, you know, I'm always having conversations with other people and other attorneys from other states. What we're going to talk about really the concepts and the the problems that we have right. are nationwide. You right. know, it, yeah. it's the same stuff everywhere, but we'll talk about specifics like perhaps, you know, the, the actual days for to take care of something, those kind of things. And that might be different in your particular state. So that's where it's important to get that information. But those attorneys are still going to be looking for you to do the same thing. Uh, in your state as far as preparing or uh, you're talking about the application process. I mean, nothing's more critical than the application process, making sure you're getting the right information up front because you're never going to get to who's authorized and who's unauthorized if there's not an application saying, here's the people we want to be occupying these premises if the lease agreement isn't clear on that. And when you said, you know, is this common? I did one yesterday, an eviction, and it was mom and dad rented the uh, unit but who's living in there? The uh, this case, it was the daughter and the son-in-law couldn't qualify, not right. in, not in a million years. So right. when you know when they go out to the property, mom and dad don't even live 
I don't even know if they live in this state. You know? Right. No, totally. So what I run into um, a lot of times is, is okay, so I, I know who applies in the application, and I know who I have in my lease and who's authorized in my lease, right? But then I just don't know how to prove that somebody is living there, visiting there, sleeps there, doesn't sleep there, really good friends. It just puts me in a world of hurt, and I want to gather evidence to give to my attorney to say, hey, I want to go through an eviction. As an attorney, what helps you um, or what recommendations would you give to us that we could have a strong case? So, I mean, that's a great point. You know, when you start talking about some point I'm going to be into court, and really you need to start thinking about it just like a great movie, right? You're living this problem, but you're trying to present it to somebody else. Right. And it's the same thing. When, some, when you watch a great movie, right, it's because their story is now presented to you. Right. And it's the same thing. You have to start thinking, well, I get it. I'm seeing all these little pieces and everything. I put it together in my head that these people are unauthorized. Right. How do I put that story? How do I make it live to somebody else? A judge right. who really doesn't care about my case right. is going to hear it for 5, 15 minutes. How do I boil all that down? Because hearsay's not going to go anywhere. Right. Yeah. Right? So I heard this or heard that. Right. We're looking for real stuff, perception, facts. You know, just tell me the facts, right? Right. Uh, that's what judges want to hear. And so really, how do you get that information? Well, you do it, you know, by putting those pieces together, you know, by keeping a log. Okay. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been at court and I ask someone, you know, okay, what dates did, did you see this person there? I don't know. Um, well, that's not helpful. We need, you know, we need actual information. Keep a log. Uh, it tells you, you know, on this date I saw this person there or on this date, you know, you saw him there. Ask questions. You okay. know, we get that a lot where the landlord shows up and, of course, the person you're expecting is not there, but the son is living there. And you're going in to replace the uh, lights or the uh, air conditioning filters, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, hi, who are you? Oh, I'm John. I'm their son and everything. Oh, okay. Well, you, you're here for, you know, a couple of weeks or what's going on? You right. know, Christmas holidays yeah, or, you know. Because yeah. the, the admissions of the other people are one of the great things for a court. Because if someone tells you, oh, I got here two months ago and, uh, you know, been living here two months, but the parents are out of town or something like that. Well, you're starting to get information that's very important that you're putting together. Other things become kind of more difficult, like, you know, perhaps if they're having problems with neighbors, neighbors might be willing to testify. Yeah, that person's living there. They stay, they come, they go. Right. But you're really trying, unauthorized occupants is one of the most difficult cases because you're trying to prove that this person not only visits a lot, but is actually living there. Living there, right. And a lot of people ask, why do you want to know my cars on the lease? I get all the cars, all the license plates. And because one of the logs is not only when I see them, but it's also what cars are constantly in the driveway and at what time. Am I seeing them at 8 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, midnight, you know? And if I can tag somebody to a car, I don't have to knock on the door and go in and see them. I can just kind of say, well, there's an, at least an unauthorized car in my driveway that's linked to this person, and I'm sure that helps the judge also make some decisions there too. Right. It's another little piece because what you're doing is you're putting pieces together, and that's the private, invest, right. private investigator in you. Right. I can tell you're right. just like, I can get all these I pieces lined up. Right. I got you. And uh, this morning, I had a case this morning. The manager came in. She had pictures of the car in the driveway where they said they were not living. Uh, this wasn't actually an unauthorized occupant. It was they purchased a a mobile home, which right. which they weren't allowed to live in. Gotcha. So it's similar. But what was interesting is the manager had put pieces together, had pictures of the car in the driveway, and then, like you said, and then actually took a picture of the car out in the court parking lot this morning. Right. And I'm sitting there hustling, trying to get these pictures, you know, to fax over to the court because these little pieces do ultimately put together the big picture, right? right. I've seen this person. I met him out there. Here's what they said. And here's these other pictures. In some environments, especially when neighbors are cooperative and they want to get rid of people because there's other issues. Because when mom and dad aren't living there, it's probably because this person not only couldn't qualify, but they they do things that mom and dad would never approve of. Right. So we get, you know, right. <laughs> we get other situations come up. And so, for example, we've had what we call game cameras. 
And uh, the neighbors are more than willing to put a game camera up. It shows when someone's coming and going from the property. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, we've had really good success with those. I had one once where uh, the people were pulling up, opening the trunk, and the people were getting out of the trunk. <laughs> and uh, the tenants there at court trying to explain this right. to a judge. <laughs> and, you know, it's just not flying. Well, I tell you, um, you know, in my career, I, I also have an eviction company and, and, you know, not something I'm super proud of as far as I, the, the cases that really always broke my heart were two main cases. And that was when I would see little kids inside and I knew their parents weren't paying the rent and eventually were going to be evicted. And, you know, that, that kind of bothered me a little bit, um, maybe a lot, you know. But the second one was when I would go into these 55 and older communities and, and the cute little grandma would answer the door, and I'd be serving her an eviction. Not not for rent. She could pay all the rent in the world. But who takes in the kid that comes out of jail or prison or maybe has the drug convictions? Where do they end up going to? And that is mama. Mama will always take them in. And here she had her cute little life in her cute little 55 community with her friends and playing bingo and shuffleboard. And here this criminal... You know, this this kid with a criminal history would come in. And that is a lot of times why we have these unauthorized occupants. They just do not qualify. Uh, you wouldn't qualify them if you saw the application, if you saw the background. Uh, but this is a problem. And I'm so grateful to have you on here because it is probably one of the most hardest things to prove in court. It really, really is. And so one other thing that I do, and I'll get your opinion to say if this is, you know, something that you'd recommend is um, – I will usually stop by once or twice a month, whether it's to pick up the rental check, uh, just check on the landscaping. I might say, hey, I need to check on the pool in the back. I, I will just make up an excuse to stop by, knock on the door, and I usually go with somebody. I don't. I always like a witness there with me because it's always, you know, he said, no, yes, no. And when I suspect that I have an unauthorized occupant, I'm over there two or three times a month, and really what I'm doing is what you told us. I'm just documenting every. Thing. And I just don't know any other way to do it. Well, and that's the way you have to do it. It's the most difficult case, and so it's going to take a lot of little pieces. It's not like, you know, where you have violence at the property and you mm -hmm. catch that on video one, one time and done. It's the little pieces because when they show up at court, it's never, well, I'm the unauthorized occupant. It's, well, I'm just there to help mom. I came over for a week or two because, you know, she's got – medical issues, those kind of things. And like you said, there's a lot of heartbreaking cases. And a lot of times, you know, you say it's heartbreaking to bring the eviction, and it is. But you got to remember, sometimes you're actually helping the people. We've had grandma and grandpa, kid gets out of prison, and grandma and grandpa are terrified. They're being victimized by this person. It's true. They're taking the money from grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Grandma and grandpa are now facing eviction, potentially losing their housing. It's true. They're losing their money, and... No one's there, you know, to remove this source of, you know, right. the criminal from from their life. Absolutely. And in most states, if one person knows you're recording, and we all have phones on us now, right? So before you go to that, um, that home, just to kind of, if you're sensing that there's an unauthorized occupant, flip on your record button in your pocket as you have these conversations. It's always great to have that um, evidence. Remember... Just like Scott said, we got to paint a movie and a picture to the judge. We got to convince the judge that our movie's better than the tenant's movie and their story. And so we want to help our attorneys win in court, one of the hardest cases to do. That's why we brought you in, Scott, because we knew you'd have all the right answers on that one. And we really appreciate your time today. Thanks. I appreciate being here. Well, we love having you here at the Rent Perfect Nation on the Rent Perfect Podcast. Uh, if you like what you hear, just subscribe. We'll keep throwing good things at you to help you be the best landlord you can be. And until next time, continue to rent perfect.